versus pro Mike Tyson. Who wins and how does it go down? Should we really be comparing two legends? I but since the ask. The people want to know. But since the ask. Do you want me to go scientific? Or I want you to break it down like Anthony Joshua breaks things down. It's quite interesting because in the era of Muhammad Ali's heavyweight reign, the heavyweights were ranked as cruiserweights of the Mike Tyson, Larry Holmes, mm. George Foreman era. Um, the Lennox Lewis, you know, they started getting bigger. Yeah. Hence why in the amateurs, they then created a super heavyweight division. So the current heavyweight division in the amateurs is what we class as the cruiserweight division. Okay. So Muhammad Ali went from, I think, lightweight, moved his way up, but he wouldn't have been a fully-fledged heavyweight. So let's say we bulked Muhammad Ali up yeah. and put size and um, strength to him. I, I, I truly believe um, Mike Tyson would have won. Reason being, uh, when you watch the fight with Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali, you see um, certain Tyson-esque to Joe Frazier styles. Like okay, Tyson yeah, yeah. used to study that Joe Frazier, you know, that like moving, yeah. moving, moving, hooks, hooks. And um, he managed to put Ali down in the fight. It was a very tough fight for Muhammad Ali. And I just believe Mike Tyson was best scored because um, times have evolved. Mike Tyson was more developed, more science, yeah. more information. Yeah. So I think that Mike Tyson would have won, in my humble opinion. People are going to come for you now in the comments. <laughs> Wow. <clears throat> that is the opinion of Anthony Joshua when asked who would win a fight between a prime Mike Tyson and a prime Muhammad Ali. Okay. And of course, he said that heavyweights are bigger now, but he think in his humble opinion, Mike Tyson would have been able to beat Muhammad Ali based on Ali's performance against Joe Frazier, okay? And Joe Frazier was able to time Ali eventually when Ali started to slow down and catch him with that hook, catch him in the in, in the chest, you know, catch him with in, in the chin. In fact, the first fight that those guys had was at Madison Square Garden, which actually, ironically, is the first loss of, of Muhammad Ali's career, okay? Okay. And <clears throat> Ali was getting caught with the left hook. And I understand the logic and the comparison of Frazier to Mike Tyson. Okay. And to really, to really go farther into that, to add another example, look at Mike Tyson and Larry Holmes. Okay. And what did Mike Tyson do to Larry Holmes? He destroyed him. Who did Larry Holmes spar with more than any other fighter? Muhammad Ali. What was Larry Holmes regarded as? Ali's ugly sparring partner. Okay? That's what his name was. People told him, oh, that's Ali's ugly sparring partner. Because he fought like Ali. He moved like Ali. He jabbed like Ali. He emulated a lot of things like Ali. Okay? He, he also floated like a butterfly. Sting like a... Stung like a bee. Okay? And... Mike Tyson destroyed him. I can see the analogy and I can understood if he if he added that to it. I did that, okay? To see where that fight kind of would have went. However, me counterpunching Anthony Joshua. We have to remember the word the question was asked if Ma a prime Muhammad Ali versus a prime Mike Tyson. So the Mike Tyson in the 80s, 86, 87, 88 versus Ali slash Cassius Clay. This is what from 66, 67. Okay. And mind you, there was three years, almost four years that Muhammad Ali could not fight because he got his boxing license stripped because he refused to fight in a war. And back then they had the draft and, you know, he refused to go on the draft. He refused to do what Joe Lewis did and what happened to Joe Lewis when he did go. He got railroaded okay he was robbed the u.s government robbed um joe lewis they taxed him as though he was still a fighter but he was in the army making i don't know 24 dollars a month something like that back in the day 
but they were still taxing him as though he was a boxer. And then they said, you owe us all this money because those four years that you dedicated yourself in the armed forces doing exhibitions and stuff like that, right? They were taxing him nonetheless. So for him fighting for his country, he also got railroaded. And it took a very, 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 very long time to set the record straight. In fact, after his death, it was almost like, sadly, like another Jack Johnson situation, right? So Muhammad Ali wasn't falling for that, but Muhammad Ali, the point I'm trying to make, Muhammad Ali lost a lot of his prime years not fighting. So by the time Muhammad Ali actually fought, Joe Frazier was well after his time. He couldn't do the things that he used to do. That wasn't the same fighter that fought uh, Sonny Liston back in 66. It was not. Okay, this guy was a guy that, that he, he couldn't fight. He had to make do with what he had. You know, he knew how to box. He was a gold Olympian. You know, he did everything that he, you know, um, that he was supposed to do. He joined, a, um, he joined the Church of Islam, right? And he started following his religion and he wanted to do what he needed to do and he couldn't, right? Because the U.S. government had implemented a draft where you had to fight. So again, Ali did not fight, or prime Ali did not fight a prime Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier was in his prime. Joe Frazier wasn't a fighter that had been sitting around three years. Joe Frazier was a guy that was ready for whatever. He was a good champion. He was a good replacement champion because the belt did go to Joe Frazier. Okay? So Joe Frazier was that guy that was the uh, the, the model uh, champion. Okay? Then you had Ali, that uh, undefeated Ali that never been beaten, but an Ali that's been sitting around for three years. Kind of put you in the mind of Tyson Fury, but for different reasons reason i have to say that different reason okay um but looking at that looking him using joe frazier as a, that frazier fight that first frazier fight as a reference i can see it but at the same time you have to understand that that ali was not the same don't don't get me wrong he was still a gifted fighter he was still a tremendous fighter you know, a great ambassador of the sport of boxing inside and outside the ring. I get it. But throwing him in there with a prime Tyson and Ali, a prime Ali, Ali could move. Ali could lean back. His legs could work. His, his footwork was quicker. You know, he might have been able to get out of the way of those punches. Now, the question you ask yourself, what will happen if Mike Tyson actually did connect with those punches? Because I think he was a bigger puncher than Frazier was anyway. Okay? So, you know, maybe the event would be the same. However, we'll never know because the example that he used, may, um, Ali was not the same fighter. He was not in his prime at that time. You know, and that's the saddest thing about the career of the boxing career of Muhammad Ali. You know, um, now Mike Tyson ironically said it also, you get better in time. You know, so the fighters of yesteryear didn't have the scientific methods and things of that nature to help them, to guide them, to understand what works with strength and conditioning. That's why you have strength and conditioning coaches. That's why they're just as valuable as the head trainer. Because they are, they keep that fighter fit by using certain scientific things. Okay, avocado, bananas, you know, pastas, things that give you energy. Whereas before, they just went on a whim of what made that fighter do whatever or what that fighter was accustomed to. Maybe if they had that back then, the fighter would have been better. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's a lot of things that you could compare Ali and, and, and Tyson for. You know, Tyson was very quick. And his, and his upper body movement was, was dynamic, very aggressive, and he could stand punches. So there's another factor. Ali could probably hit him four or five times like he did Frazier in that first fight. Ali comes out chopping. You know, he's chopping. He's chopping these punches. You know, he's chopping down all types of angles. You know, Frazier's bobbing, you know, trying to get up under these punches. A lot of times he's getting caught with these punches. But Ali, as many times as he hit Frazier, he was able to withstand those punches. 
and then still throw that rising hammer left hook. One, two, three, four, bow! You know what I mean? Because he started timing it. But Ali was getting tired. But would Ali have got tired? That same Ali that fought Sonny Liston. Okay, that's the question you ask yourself. So it's really about the conditioning of both fighters. Hmm. And Tyson was in tremendous shape too. You know, Cus did not play around. I <laughs> understand that. Customato did not play around at all. So it was one of those things where I can understand the reference, but that is always a question that will have so many different answers. Um, I think Ali could outbox Mike Tyson. But could I, Mike Tyson knock out Ali? I think he could knock out Ali if he caught Ali. You know, but if a prime Ali, would he be able to catch that prime Ali? Henry Cooper caught Ali. Could Mike Tyson catch Ali? Right? Sonny Liston could not. Sonny Liston was, uh, before, Son before George Foreman, there was Sonny Liston. And Ali beat them both. And these were two different Ali's. Okay? That was a big difference between the man that beat Sonny Liston versus the man that beat George Foreman. And people need to understand that. That's what it made it so great. But Ali himself was able to take punches because what happened when, when Frazier caught Ali with that flush left hook in the 14th round and put Ali on his backside? The man got back up. So it would be one hell of a fight. But anyway, that's my counterpunch on that, guys. You guys tell me what you think about Anthony Joshua's um, opinion on Mike Tyson versus Muhammad Ali. Please subscribe, and you guys have been counterpunch. Peace.